Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Okay, wait a second. This is very different. So it's a it's an illustration. Uh, it's like a scorecard of sorts with this sort of illustrated lights on the left, lights on the right. Uh, there's a football, a soccer ball on the grass. Right. But the the point of the graphic is it says score time. And That's then correct. score eight time. It says coupon betting, score betting odds, time, live betting. Uh, there's also a, a graphic of a of a roulette wheel that also maybe some some cards yes. yeah like a like blackjack table register now what's this okay i was a copywriter in the 80s i was you know i told you i was a travel manager um well one of the yeah. travel one of the places that i actually was a travel manager for was jwt now jwt was the biggest advertising agent in the world at, at the time and uh, I used to look after their travel for them. And then the guy there, he, the, the guy th who I was talking to, a chap called Andrew Nelson, who was responsible for the Andrex campaign, the, the famous Andrex campaign with the dog and everything. He said to me, um, well, you do some writing. Why don't you do the copy test? And I said, well, what's that? And he said, well, it's just a, a way of being able to gauge if you're any good creatively wise, and maybe you can you know, get a job as a creative as a creative person. So I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, go, I'll give it a go. He said, look, I'll tell you in all honesty, he said, no one's passed it in three years. It's really quite, <laughs> really quite difficult. So I said, yeah, all right, I'll give it a go. I did the copy test and I passed it. And, um, oh, wow. I, got, and I got taken up to the creative department to meet the creative director. And he gave me some... Uh, he gave me some campaigns to do where they'd already done the campaigns, so like for Guinness or for Kellogg's, for example. And he said, I want you to redo the adverts. So I said, yeah, all right. So mm -hmm. I redid the adverts. And on top of that, with the, um, with, the, with the copy test that I did, he offered me a job in the creative department. Amazing. I went into JWT as a, a first of all, a junior copywriter. And within 10 days, I'd written my first commercial, which was for um, a, a dog company called Spillers. And uh, that I was, was really enjoying that lifestyle. It was really good. But then mm -hmm. <laughs> fate always seems to ha have a hand in whatever I do. That At that time, and it's the first time in the history of um, commercial television, ITV went on strike. Uh, which meant that all the commercials that were the background of JWT all went off air. They didn't have any revenue right. coming in for them. So we were we were reduced to just producing posters or producing press ads or magazine ads and things mm -hmm. like that. So for about a year, we were uh, clinging on to what, what we were doing. And then suddenly we all got made redundant. So I just said, oh, this is ridiculous. I've got to pay the mortgage. I can't hang around waiting to get another job in, in advertising. And what with everybody else also experiencing the fact that there was no TV advertising and that. So I went back into the travel business and um, I ended up working in a merchant bank. But that, that's a, another story. But to go back to what you, <laughs> to go back to what you were saying... How did I get involved with this particular uh, scenario? When I came to Cyprus, I, I worked for several companies. I worked for phone companies. I worked for um, a company that specialised in backgammon. I, I've now, I, right. I don't know how to play backgammon. All right, I've never been able to play backgammon yet. You're hired. <laughs> I used to have to write columns for backgammon. I even produced an e-book on how to play backgammon and what, what you know, the various moves that you do with backgammon and all the rest right. of it. So I produced that. So I, I, had, uh, I had a job working um, in this place, doing this place 65, and uh, around the corner from me, 
where I used to live was an advertising agency. So I went in there one day and I went, so I went up to the director. In Cyprus? Was, yeah, in, yeah, in Limassol. Okay. And I went up to the director and I said to him, do you have freelance, you know, copywriters or anything? And he said, well, tell me what, you know, what, what, what your experience is. So I told him my experience and he said, well, I'll give you a, I'll give you a brief. So I said, okay, fine. So he gave me a brief and I did this brief for him, took it back over the weekend and he said, could you start working for us? And I said, well, I've got this job at the moment, but yeah, I could think I'd probably be able to just start straight away, you know, from that point of view. So I ended up mm -hmm. working working in his advertising agency, and I was. Now you've got to remember, I don't speak Greek. I don't speak a bloody word of Greek. Okay, so I was working in this agency. Now remember, they had Greek text as well as English text. So there I was writing TV commercials in English, which could be translated into Greek. So everything had to be visual. Mm -hmm. So I was writing visual, visual commercials, etc., and uh, I did the TV commercials, radio commercials, and, and press and things like that. And one of the things that came up was we had an idea that maybe it would be a good, good, good thing to have a a game. So mm -hmm. I came up with this like bingo idea for. Burger King, believe it or not. Um, we went and saw Burger okay. King and they said, yeah, okay, sounds like a good idea, but no, not for us at this moment. So I took it away and I changed it around a bit. And then it came up with the idea of score time, which was, I'm trying to think of how, how it, the best way to explain it. Most football games, like if you're doing the pools, for example, are based on draws. You know, uh, eight mm -hmm. draws will give you the jackpot, you know, that sort of thing. Or right. for games that are uh, home games, if you if you predict five games and they're home games or whatever. Mine was based on the pure idea of how many goals were scored, not just by one or two games, but throughout the league. So, in other words, mm -hmm. if you had a figure of, say, 60 goals, that would be what you wanted, that would be the target that you were looking to try and get. So we developed this game right. called Score Time, and we actually went to London, to Littlewoods, the Pools Company, and uh, we mm -hmm. showed it to them, and they were impressed with what we, what we had, and they asked us to do a World Cup version so we came back to Cyprus and we started putting a World Cup version together. But then we also went out to uh, Athens because the uh, main gambling organization over here is place is, um, oh, I can't remember the name now. They're the main gambling organization and they basically control everything. And uh, we went out to Athens, we came to see them. And we showed them the game and they said, yeah, okay, this seems like a, a good thing. The only problem is when we came back, we found out that they liked the idea, but the, they felt it would be detrimental to their own Joker idea, which was um, where, where everybody used to do the Joker. Joker was very simple. This, by comparison, right. at the time was more complex. So... They thought, right, well, we'll stick with what we've got. Anyway, score time we, we put together and we put it into a computer and we put it onto a, a website and people used to play it and, and that sort of thing. But then, as I told you before, fate seems to, to have a hand in what we do. We, we were doing quite well as an agency and then one day I got a phone call to say, don't come in the office anymore. We're no longer in business. There's been a fire, and the fire has actually burnt out everything that we've got. So all our, oh, wow. inf all our infrastructure was gone. We couldn't operate. So everybody was made redundant. That was it. Oh, wow. That's what I mean. The fate hands you that sort of thing. You have to deal with it. Sure.
in an odd um okay so let's tie it back to the point of the podcast right like we're all given a limited number of of seconds of of moments of of presence time of life right and um you could say call it leave it up to fate or leave it up to uh, the gods or leave it up to the universe you know who knows what happens okay so i i love the idea that you're you're the kind of person who for better or for worse will sit there and tinker and come up with these ideas and then you know not be afraid of going from cyprus to to athens to you know in greece and then going to london and then trying to shop around this idea to see who's going to take it uh it has some success some failure yeah so so why don't you talk about your personal relationship to failure how do you feel about failure uh that's an interesting uh question because um i tend to feel that um i should give in but i don't give in mm. you know i tend to think oh well you've given it a good crack you know that that sort of idea but sometimes something just inspires me to say no look just keep going you know just keep keep going um and somehow i just uh, kind of keep keep the momentum going you know from from that point of view i've had so wow. many disappointments by comparison to, to mm-hmm. you know but to, to successes if you like i it is like the best way i can describe it is i go so far up the ladder and then at that point i start to slide down and that's just, that that's it i never make it to the actual top but i keep trying to get to the top that's the best sort of right. analogy that i can give you it's it's very easy to give up but uh it's harder right. to keep going is it yeah um yeah i think you're right i think like how do you move so you know you get this phone call saying hey listen don't bother coming into the office cuz it's burnt down how do you go from there to your next step forward what were the gears that were turning in your head well then you see uh, it was a quite a case of what do i do now the problem was because i don't speak greek i couldn't get into another advertising agency so i had to have a complete change of career completely changed everything and um in cyprus it's a very financial island that we have a double tax treaty uh, agreement and we also have um apart from the tourism which you can imagine is is very very large in in its own way um we also have the, the financial advantages and we have a gaming infrastructure as well mm-hmm. we have forex companies and they're licensed forex companies we also have many unlicensed and unfortunately but generally the um the, the consensus is that this seems to be the if you like number 3 in the industries of uh, on the island so forex and and things like that now but before i got into forex there's a thing called binary options i don't know if you've come across binary options before but binary <laughs> options was uh, <laughs> binary options was uh, was nothing more than a gaming thing it, it basic basically was yeah. it was so simplistic it was untrue but people lost fortunes absolute fortunes over it and there were a couple of mm. uh, shall we say dubious companies that were operating this um operation of um binary options basically what binary options was you had to predict the certain level of investment whether it would go up or go down in a given time that was that was the that was the mm-hmm. complete essence of it in many ways forex is similar in but much more complex it has a, a a different infrastructure to binary options you also have to know knowledge of the market you have to be able to assess if you think for a zoom since a commodity myron myron sorry to interrupt sorry i'm sorry to interrupt myron 
I think you've lost me. What are we talking about? Oh. <laughs> so I'm looking at the score time. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. After, like, after, <laughs> after, score, after score time, I went into the financial world. That's what happened. Okay. Got so it. That, that, Got from, it. From, from okay. That, that's why. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I was just like, because I'm looking at the image, trying to get an anchor back to it. Well, look, the, these conversations really scream along. Shall we go on to the next photo? Is, is that another stage? Or do you want to continue talking about score time? So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting.